Good Morning KPR, and uh, today we're uh, we're looking at a piece of equipment we've added to the audio chain of our uh, receiving system here. This is a monitor set up for uh, doing off-air checks for local broadcasters. It's probably something you won't find in most ham or SWL uh, shacks, but uh, I've seen pictures of uh, some well-equipped shacks, and uh, they do have quite a bit of uh, uh, studio type and uh, mobile, you know, high-end commercial mobile equipment. Anyhow, here's something we put together this past week. Uh, and it's basically an audio analyzer and a uh, audio prepping device for uh, recording or doing STL, studio transmitter links, uh, uh, air checks, off air checks, uh, field surveys of uh, uh, broadcast signals and so forth. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get a little light on this and, and uh, go through it real quickly. First, uh, we start with a, a scope that allows us to look at the recovered audio. Let's see if we can zoom in here a little bit without making everybody real dizzy. Uh, if we can get this with the there we go there's the recovered audio of the station a local am -er that we're listening to right now and uh, again you know an oscilloscope type function we can go to a nighttime view it's, it's kind of washed out for the camera uh, but there's the uh, recovered audio in a oscilloscope fashion. Uh, we can look at the uh, the actual waveform, the broadcast carrier content here. And as you can see, uh, the various uh, amounts of modulation. Obviously, if there's any clipping or anything else, that's going to be very apparent. And we can make adjustments to the transmitter or the broadcast audio chain as required. Uh, now we can go over and look at the modulated envelope. Let's see if we can see that. And again, it would be there we go. very obvious if there's clipping going on and so forth. Um, let's go to a, uh, a local beacon. It might be easier to see some of this stuff. And we'll get some audio. there we can see the audio quality of the broadcast signal. We'll look here at the uh, envelope. You can visually read Morse code. J-W-E. And then finally back to the recovered audio. You can see the sine wave and that signal. If we're so inclined, we can look at the VU representation of how much level we're sending to the uh, recorder or the transmitter, whatever this happens to be used for. And also the spectrum analyzer, in this case, the 1K, the 800 or 1K signal. Okay, so that's basically the scope. We also have uh, VU, volume unit indication, and it's kind of hard to see, but 2550-7500% modulation and clipping indicator. This can be calibrated for the line that we can send uh, either is uh, mono with an input signal monitored on the top trace and then the output signal after the signal's been processed through the um, uh, clipping uh, uh, avoidance systems if you will for broadcast people uh, any amount of compression or expansion that they use any kind of tone 
uh, equalization, pre-emphasis, any of that stuff could be the bottom trace. So that would be the output signal. We could do uh, stereo, left and right, obviously. Or we could do diversity broadcasting, which is uh, kind of catching on, but not, I guess not so much in AEM work. And that would be uh, here, where we'd have analog on the top side and digital on the bottom. Again, all all involved in getting a good quality signal out to the antenna. Or, in the case of a ham or SWL, good quality signal into the shack through your uh, your little console or hi-fi system, whatever you're using. This module allows us to, we can go into standby mode. The red flashing lights indicate we need attention. And the attention is that we're not passing any signal. We're just monitoring uh, the input. So we can control each one of those and, of course, the levels accordingly. We can predetermine the, uh, the send signal, either the monitor, which would be our speakers in the shack, or the line output, which goes to the STL or the recording device, whatever. Here we have a status indicator, a little hard to see with this camera where when the carrier is open, the red lights are on, and when there's data on the carrier, either voice or digital data, the yellow lights will flash. That runs directly from the detector circuit of the radios. Here we can go to either one and two channel for stereo or the diversity reception, which would be up here. And you notice on the screen, well, it's kind of hard to see, but now there's only one signal coming in. And if we can combine them if it's a mono station. Where now we can see the input and the output. And finally, uh, the actual cue, ed, edit, or uh, dubbing controls, depending on what you're doing, if you're recording this or queuing up to uh, between commercials to a broadcast station, whatever you're doing. Red flashing light means pay attention, and uh, when the queue comes, you just go over to the uh, send, and you're off and running. Uh, there's a little sidebar. This is sitting on top of a multi-coupler we put together for HF. This is good from 20 kilohertz up to about 30 megs. And with an attenuator and a gain control, we can increase or decrease the signal about 20 dB, and a uh, 30 megahertz plus VHF preamp that we can invoke for, for instance, the STLs uh, are up near the microwave range, cell phone range, and uh, we can monitor direct raw feed off the air from here. And uh, that's pretty much it. This is, uh, again, a nice little toy for the hammer SWL are uh, fairly simple to put together and eventually I'll have the plans for it up on my website that website is bobsamerica.com bobsamerica.com and I'm Bob in KPR and I want to thank you all for watching